Hey, what's up guys? Uh, it's episode three of Coffee with Cabinet on a snowy afternoon at Ohio University. I'm here with Colleen Allen, who is our VP of External Relations. How are you, Colleen? Doing all right. Great. <laughs> um, so my first question for you is, can you tell me about your experience in the Shea and kind of how you got to where you are now? Yeah, so I joined the Shea the second semester of my freshman year, and I remember going to one of the meetings where they talked about like cabinet and CAC and all these leadership positions and I immediately was in awe. I was so like impressed by the opportunity to you know, get involved in leadership, specifically the idea of being on cabinet, like a VP mm -hmm. or co-chair. I was like, wow, these are really you know, the best of the best as far as leadership. And I thought to myself, it would be really cool if that could be me someday. I doubt it would ever happen, um, but let's give it a try. So I first got involved as an account manager overseeing six of our corporate partners. I worked really, really hard in that. I just like did the extra little things to make the partners experience just a little bit better, kind of to make myself stand out from the rest of the account managers. For example, sending my partners a happy holidays email without mm -hmm. being asked, that kind of thing. So I worked really hard and that was noticed by the director of partner relations at the time, Alex Rado. He's like, Colleen, go for my position. I need you to do a great job. So put together my proposal to become director of partner relations, interviewed, and I got it. So in that role, I was overseeing all the account managers, and I absolutely loved it. Um, worked really hard in that role as well, and then I went for VP of external relations, and I'm absolutely loving the role. It's different kind of being in the leadership role versus like the doer kind of role. Mm -hmm. um, but my directors are great. Um, we're having a blast and I'm excited to carry out the semester and then look into the fall. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Uh, you touched on your account managers and that's a big part of the external relations team. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about each one of those directors, who they are, what they do, and what the external relations does from day to day and long term? Yeah, so I have three directors. I have first uh, is the director of partner relations. His name is Sam Scott. He's a junior here in the program. Um, he oversees 10 account managers. So basically, overall, as account managers, our job is to make sure that the partners are getting the most out of their experience in the SHE, and also on the other side of the spectrum, that the students are engaging with our partners. So Sam is overall um, holding professionalism workshops for the account managers to make sure that they're on their A-game, making sure the emails and communication is transparent and getting out there, and really just leading the team as a whole. Um, then we have Justin Kelly, who's the Director of Alumni Relations. He's a freshman. He's doing a great job. Um, one of our big um, focuses and goals this semester is to transition all of our alumni and students onto our new LinkedIn page because we really want to start to build that interaction and engagement between our students and alumni. So Justin has a team of 10 students that are going through LinkedIn and sending out messages to individuals that are on the old page to help them join the new page. Mm -hmm. So um, we're excited to have that all finished out so the next semester we can kind of focus on the bigger picture, hosting alumni events, that kind of thing. Um, and then lastly, I have Ryan Sexton who is a freshman as well. He's the director of First Impressions. Um, his job essentially is when we have a new partner that's interested in joining the Shea, he puts together a panel of students that are in the program and they talk with that partner about you know the benefits of joining the Shea, asking questions about that company and what they can do to benefit our program, and just overall um, being that first impression for partners that are interested in the Shea to really show them what the Shea stands for. So it's been, awesome. it's been fun. Yeah, we have a number of new partners this year. We're really growing and having some fantastic companies partner with us, which is very exciting as a young member of the program. You did mention the, the old LinkedIn page and the new LinkedIn page. So some of you might be on the old page, which was uh, Shea Sales Center. The new page is the Ralph and Lucy Shea Sales Center. Um, so the old profile was set up as a person. The new profile is set up as a school page. So our students can actually say they work for the Shea Sales Center if they're in a director position. They also show up as members and our alumni show up as alumni. So it's really a database uh, that we're using to build out our membership online. So it's something really cool that we're working on. Um, you also talked about being an account manager yourself mm -hmm. and some of the account managers that you work for on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, being an account manager is a different skill than really just selling or being a sales manager. Can you touch on that and how that's made you better? Yeah, so I would say the biggest thing between being an account manager and selling is the fact that in an account manager role, you're not really selling a service or a product. You're basically selling the ability to 
build and carry on a lasting relationship mm -hmm. with someone or specifically our corporate partners. So, um, you know, I guess you could say in an essence, we're selling the Shea by making sure that they're still enjoying their time with us as a partner. But overall, we just want to maintain the relationship because if we can maintain the relationship with the account manager and the, um, the company, then they're more likely to want to be uh, more highly uh, participating, participating more in the program as a whole. I would say some of the skills I've learned would just be basic like email and phone call etiquette. Mm -hmm. You know, um, use I know I use like conference lines and all mm -hmm. that, which I don't even think most students know even know what those really are. Um, just being able to prepare an email um, professionally, but yet being able to personalize the email as well, and then just in person interactions as well. Um, understanding you know when you get to that point of you know I have a really strong relationship with this account, so I can start to joke around with them yeah. more. Or, this account, you know, I'm just starting to get to know them, so I have to be a little more on the professional side of things. Um, so I think it's, for me, because I've been an account manager for so long, it's been really fun to see the relationships build over time and how much more comfortable I've gotten with all of my mm -hmm. partners I've worked with. That's so, really awesome. Yeah. Um, so my next question, um, I know you were my, my mentor when I got in the program, and we've both come a long way <laughs> since then. Um, yeah. Who have been your greatest mentors, whether they be students, executive staff, partners in the Coach Candidate program? Yeah. Uh, who do you attribute your success to who has helped you get to where you are? For sure. I would say um, the first individual that really helped mentor me through the whole process is definitely Alex Rado. Mm -hmm. He really encouraged me. I guess I could say he more so inspired me to be a really good account manager. I feel like the best leaders are the ones that are inspiring Absolutely. the people that are leading to do their best. And Alex really... I, when I worked for him, I wanted to be the best account manager for him. And then past being an account manager, when I went for the director of partner relationships um, got a role, Alex was really there to help me, you know, put together, you know, some really good plans of actions and um, to just be successful going forward. Um, now that I'm in my VP role, I'm definitely involved more with um, working more with Greg Scott. Um, Greg has been tremendous um, for me as far as you know building my confidence in this role and really believing in me um, I think Greg has been the person who's definitely um, taken my abilities and helped me reach my greatest potential more so than really anyone um, he's been there for me um, as director of partner relations and now as VP we work very well together um, he also works very well with my directors which has been mm -hmm. great and I just think overall um, having Greg to be there for the external relations team has been so beneficial. I go to him for everything, running everything um, through him because I really respect his opinion and um, while also having that flexibility to kind of do my own thing because he believes in me. Mm -hmm. So I think that the reason that the Shea has been successful for as long as it has is because the people that leave always come and give back to the students, whether it be That's alumni right. or corporate partners. And uh, we have a really great community of people that are willing to help us out. So that's fantastic. Most definitely. Um, the next question is, what has the Shea taught you and why should someone else join? Yeah. So it's funny. When I joined the Shea, I didn't even know I wanted to go into sales. I didn't know I wanted to go into sales until last semester. And I'm a junior. So <laughs> if that tells you anything. Because yeah. I think the biggest misconception is that you have to be interested in sales to join this organization, which is absolutely not the case. Um, so for me, the biggest thing I've gotten out of it, yes, gaining some sales skills has been really cool and I love it and I now want to pursue a sales career, but for me the biggest thing has been the leadership skills that I've learned and just having confidence in myself. Um, I think before, um, I mean I kind of had this realization just in the past months, when I came into this leadership role as VP, I thought that the best leaders were the ones that always hit their goals every single mm -hmm. time. Which, that's a big part of it, but I think what's even more um, important is the leaders and how they adapt to situations when a goal isn't hit. You know, asking the people you're leading, what can you do to fix this, or how can I as a leader be there to help you, and what's the game of that, it's, what's the game plan to make sure that this goal gets hit moving forward. Um, so I think just learning to be adaptable in a leadership role has been super big for me, just gaining my self-confidence and professionalism skills. To anyone that's interested in joining the Shea, I would say please look into it. There are so many opportunities. You know, for me, it was the partner side of things and the external and building off of our corporate partners. For someone else, it might be the HR side of things or marketing. Mm -hmm. So I think the thing I love about the Shea is you're going to have, you know, if you put in the effort and you take advantage of the resources, you will see some kind of result. The path is just different for everyone. Yeah. So.
I definitely think for me the access to, we have some of the best faculty in the world as yes. far as sales research goes. Yeah. We have Jess, Panagopoulos, Mick, Lisa Beeler, um, Adam Rapp, all the people are around are really trying to figure out what's going on in the market. And you have direct access to that information and just a, a knock on their door. So that's my thing personally is just being up to date and, yeah. and having the ability to make mistakes and recover from those mistakes is huge for, sure. uh, for somebody who's going into their career. So. Um, what's next for you and your division? What are some of your goals yep. moving forward? Big things coming up over the summer and the fall. And uh, what's your message to the viewers that you want to send moving forward? Yeah. So overall for my division, our goal as, as a whole is to really increase the engagement, the transparency, and the overall communication between our partners, whether they're current, a potential new partner, and then alumni. Um, I would say moving forward, um, you're definitely going to see some big changes with the alumni relations role. We are looking to potentially putting together an event, an alumni event this fall. It's always been in the spring, but um, we're thinking sometime around the symposium. It'd be cool to consider putting together an event then. So I would say the biggest changes moving forward are going to be some greater engagement between alumni and um, our students. Right now we are pretty satisfied with the amount of partners we have and the relationships we have with them. Obviously we're always continuing to build off of those, but right now the focus moving forward is going to be the alumni relations. Okay. So. Anything else before we wrap up? Um, I think that's it. I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, thanks I really for being on it. and uh, cheers to the Thank you guys for watching. That's episode three, Coffee with Cabinet.